there's a dangerous new weapon on the streets. It's scaring police officers across the country. More and more people are carrying it as it becomes cheaper and more available every day. That weapon is the camera. Turn it off. I'm not shutting it off. Officer, are you going to jail? Get off the motorcycle, state police. You keep filming me, I'm going to take it from you, understand? I'm not putting the camera down until you... We're rolling, bud. We're rolling. You hit me. You can't take pictures on federal property. Why you need to... That's the law. The property is being protected. The laws surrounding public photography and the recording of police encounters are vague and complicated, subject to variance from one local jurisdiction to the next. Software developer and libertarian blogger Antonio Musumeci found himself in the midst of this legal fog in late 2009. I had come across a story randomly about this fellow named Julian Heiklin, a 77 or 78 year old at the time, who was doing jury nullification outreach uh, in Manhattan, not far from where I work. Heikland is a legal activist known for passing out jury nullification literature outside of courthouses and often getting arrested for doing so in his particular style of passive resistance. Antonio met up with Heikland at the Daniel Patrick Moynihan United States Courthouse, the federal courthouse Julian had selected for the day's protest. Monday, November the 9th, at 11.30, I get there a little earlier than he was planning to be there. I had a little spy cam on my, on my belt, and I had a Canon FS100 flash camera. It's about the size of a soda can. Eventually, he showed up, and almost instantly, two, I suspect, court officers showed up and looked like they were giving him some grief. You got something to do? Stand here, can I? Just seeing what's happening. So they tell him he can't be there, he disagrees. Clifford Barn then shows up, the arresting officer. In uh, the jurisdictions of which I'm aware, uh, there's no prohibition on uh, uh, video recording or photographing things when you're standing in a public place uh, and uh, you're looking in, at another public place. Eugene Volokh, a law professor at UCLA who runs the popular law blog The Volokh Conspiracy, explains that citizen ignorance of the law sometimes allows police to get away with more than they otherwise would. Not everybody knows what the law is, and sometimes not even all police officers know what the law is. Not film the building. Why is it illegal? Uh, is there a law? So there sometimes are myths that spring up about how this is supposedly illegal, that's supposedly illegal. You can't take uh, pictures of federal policy. Twelve states have laws banning the audio recording of conversations in which both parties have not consented. This is how many cases involving filmed police encounters are prosecuted. My civil liberties are being violated at this moment by the videotape. But as it happens, the unfortunate reality is that often police officers can intimidate people into uh, not doing things they otherwise legally could. Officers employed intimidation tactics against Musumeci as they arrested protester Julian Heikland. We work for him. News agency. Oh, okay. Cool. Monsieur R.D. I don't need to show you that. You absolutely do. I'm a listener of Free Talk Live. Uh, it's a libertarian radio show out of New Hampshire. The people who run the show often say, well, if you're approached by a cop and they ask, like, why are you there, why are you filming, uh, you know, tell them you're a producer for Free Talk Live because anyone can call up the show and, and provide news. Well, I did that, and they assumed that it was commercial. And so he instantly arrested me without warning. Go ahead and sit down. You're under Excuse arrest, me? too. For you what? Have a press card on you. Turn around. Sit down. Uh, well, you're okay. Sit down. Two people are holding you. Sit there. Officers actually arrested and charged Musumeci for a federal code prohibiting commercial photography of a federal building. They seized one of his cameras and issued a $75 citation. Musumeci brought the case to the NYCLU. We have long been involved with helping people who have been uh, harassed by law enforcement officers while engaging in photography. Mr. Musumeci was at federal court and he had problems with federal officials. Um, and since 9-11 we have been concerned about and have received reports about harassment by federal officers at federal buildings here in New York City. Um, so this was an opportunity to pursue that. The NYCLU filed suit on Musumeci's behalf. The government almost immediately recognized that uh, what they had done was improper, that the rule they were enforcing could not be enforced against photographers on public property outside of federal buildings, and consequently very quickly agreed to a settlement in which they would recognize, as they have done, 
that this sort of photography is completely lawful and there's no prohibition against it. The government agreed in the settlement in this case to send a written directive to all Federal Protective Service officers informing them that there was no prohibition against photography from public property of federal courthouses. And the rule is very clear, people can engage in public photography of federal buildings. While the issue of filming on federal property may be closer to resolution, the question of recording encounters with police is still an open one. Here's what photographers should keep in mind. It's legal to film federal buildings in public spaces. We got one coming for me. Know your local wiretapping laws before filming. Ask which ordinance is being enforced, if challenged by law enforcement. The highwayman takes solely upon himself the responsibility, danger, and crime of his own act. He does not pretend that he has any rightful claim to your money or that he intends to use it for your own benefit. Furthermore, having taken your money, he leaves you as you wish him to do. He does not keep protecting you by commanding you to bow down and serve him by requiring you to do this and forbidding you to do that. Lysander Spooner but unless federal courts make a ruling, the law will remain necessarily murky, explains Volokh. First Amendment applies to all states and to the federal government. But the Supreme Court has never made it quite clear uh, what the rules are with regard to news gathering under the First Amendment. And in a new media world where every blogger with a cell phone camera is a potential journalist, the umbrella of news gathering protection may need to be quite large. Turn that goddamn thing off and get out of here. No one could imagine a, a, a pretty aggressive view of news gathering, right? Which is that if you're in a, in a public place, if you're not trespassing on private property, you're entitled to gather information because how can you effectively speak if you can't gather the information necessary for you to speak? A lot of these laws were written with an eye towards protecting privacy, even when they involve communications that really have little to do with privacy as we generally understand the term, as most of us understand the term. While the laws about recording encounters with public officials remain vague, Musumeci and many others will have to continue risking arrest to test the boundaries of free speech. And unfortunately, law enforcement officials have confused public photography with dissent or espionage or criminal activity, uh, and that's just wrong. When you're talking about police officer interaction with citizens, uh, by and large, there's, there's a lot of benefit uh, uh, to, uh, to having them be recorded and then be monitored. Most government action ends up being better done when it is done in public. Do you know the law, sir? Absolutely, I'm one of them, I'm an officer. There's nothing better than being able to, you know, provide objective reality, you know, this film footage and then just putting your little spin on it and then just say, well, you know, make your own decision. Or that there's just nothing the government can do about it without outright banning, you know, cell phone cameras. For Reason TV, I'm Hawk Jensen. And that's about the only thing the governments have done. Yes, I fought long and hard to secure my place on top. With bombs and tanks and crack cocaine and violence from the cops. I kept you apathetic and this is how I've won. And that's about the only thing the governments have done. Yeah, that's about the only thing the governments have done.